Talk To Me Tuesday season four premiere. I'm your host, just Jocelyn, of course. And I know y'all miss me because I miss y'all so much. I have missed you guys so much. This break has been amazing. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to do the invite. I want to thank you all for tuning in, for staying tuned, for being excited. I have an amazing, amazing show lined up for us today. But I wanted to go over some things that I did during the break. So during the break of season three and season four, I have been doing the most, like the absolute most. So I've been on quite a few other shows. I visited um, Tasty Talks Radio. So that was back on January 11th. I um, visited that with Goddess Tasty and Goddess Luscious. Their show was so fun. It was so fun. They had me cracking up. They had me talking about all types of juicy, juicy stuff. So that was fun. Make sure you check out Tasty Talks Radio every single thursday from 8 p.m until 10 i think their show is two hours 8 to 10. i also visited the bar podcast with tamina a scott and breeze t their show it was just like non-stop laughs they had me tripping they had me talking about all types of different things so hopefully we'll get all those ladies to visit the show again and you guys can check out the bar podcast every thursday as well at seven o'clock so today's show is going to be amazing. Today's show is titled Melvin Moms. I have four amazing women coming through to discuss their different parental situations. And I know a lot of people are like, well, what is the whole Melvin Moms thing about? So, in my opinion, what we're calling a Melvin Mom is an amazing woman of color parenting, parenting the best way we know how. So, of course, I'm a Melvin Mom. You know, y'all see this little crime scan or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, and I have four great women coming through. So we have Kara, we have Charlize, we have Wanda and Shantae come in and they'll all come through and they'll explain what, what makes them know the mom. So I hope that you guys are excited, as excited as I am to be back. The break was crazy. The season is gonna be crazy. I have so many, so many different ideas and things that I just want to improve with the show. And as always, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and rocking with me as usual. So we're going to get right into it because like I said, I got four moms coming through. So we're going to get right to it and invite our first guest. We have Miss Kiara coming through. So come on, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. <laughs> she got all scary spice. Say hey to the people. Hi, people. The shirt is cute. Thank you. Thank you. It's um, Rock and Dots for Kinsley is her name and bro. Also, we did like the eye and the hand. You know, she see through her eyes kind of thing. So okay. That was so, so I wanted to um, bring you on. I wanted to invite you on to the show because your daughter, Kinsley, for those who may not know or who didn't watch the trailer to the show, your daughter, Kinsley, was born with a very rare eye disease. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly is it? Because I'm going to say it correctly. Right? disorder. Okay. So, it's called anophthalmia. It's born without eyes. Okay. So, it's the anophthalmia one, but she was born without both. So, she was born with the absence of both of her eyes. Okay, and so it's a genetic disorder. It's not a disease. Mm -hmm. So we carry just like sickle cell. Or oh, okay. So it's like a trait that you or her father. Yeah. Oh, wow. So how, how old is Kinsley now first? She's 11. She's 11 months. Okay, so I was thinking she was like one. No. I was a little old next month. So how, how, how was that? <laughs> um, so before, before we get into that, do you or anyone you know, like, have this? I know you said it's, it's genetic. So do you know anybody that already has it? So you weren't expecting it? No. No. Right. Not, not ever. Ever. It's weird because, um, no, I don't know anybody, but in the hospital, I Googled the day before we found out. I found out the second day. So I, I had a whole day with her without knowing. So we Googled something about baby opening her eyes, and the little boy popped up their head was born in China or something around eyes. And I'm like, you know, look, look at this. Okay. And Kyle was like, you know, like, in, in our year, like, what's the chances of that happening to us? It was more so, like, look at this craziness. Okay. And it actually, you know. So, so I know you said that the first, so the first day, I you mean, just thought she didn't open her eyes because she was Right. Born. They said that they were small and, you know, like, they gave this whole thing. Even the nurse, which we still have yet to find, and Kyle brought up the other day, um, mentioned, like, she saw them. She saw them, they're small and give them the eye. She never saw that. Oh wow! So at no point during your pregnancy did you have any? Because she ideas? has like the facial feet. So if you're doing the skeletal view, mm -hmm. she does have the sockets. Okay. But there's not an eye inside, so it's like kind of hard to look for unless you're looking for it. 
Oh wow! So you went a whole day just thinking that your baby. I don't think yeah. you you know because yeah, as a mom, we never. Mom, you know, I never thought it. I was never even when she came out. I never was. I was never like set up like something as I asked every nerve. I don't care if you came in there to check in. Excuse me, miss. <laughs> What's going on? Mama, yeah, like she, oh, no, that's one because she had a sis under one. So it was okay. like they thought maybe something they did. And I'm just like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Everybody gave me the same thing. And I'm like, no. no so on day two of her birth, it was, okay, something wrong at that point. They at already that knew. Point, they did not know. They, they wanted, before we can go home the, five, the next day, mm -hmm. they had to see him. So the um, pediatrician came back in. But she messed with her the first day. She's like, I'm not going to mess with her too much. You know, they seem swollen. You know, okay. I don't want to, you know, keep bothering her. So um, she came in and was like, we're going to take her to the nursery. We're going to try to do it. Then she came back and was like, they gave me that kind of like, you know, we're going to take her. Worst case scenario, we're going to take her over the shop. Right. Worst case scenario is that they don't have any. Not that she said it in a joking way, but kind of in that way because she never seen it. Nobody okay. that I worked with ever seen it before. So she's like, worst case scenario is that we don't see anything. So um, it may be right back to the boy. The the picture. Picture. Right. So you researched it and get, and already had a name. They, at that time, still didn't I still didn't have a name. I saw it and I just, as a mom, you think in worst case, like, you know, kind of, you think in everything. Right. So I didn't have a name. I didn't know what it was either, but I saw that, that they happened, that they even sent him home. You know, mm -hmm. she could have been sent home too. They didn't push, but wow. they even sent him home like that. So, so they took her over to chop and open. Oh, they they took her to the um not the oculus, the um yeah whatever the department that is. Optometrist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, optometrist. Okay, okay. Thank you, sorry. Um, I yeah, I, I, I'm brain fart. She go there all the time. I don't know what happened, but um yeah. So they took her over there. It was like they had the things to. Prior on her eyes. Okay. So when they came, took them an hour. So in that hour, I knew something wasn't right. Took you, uneasy. took you ten minutes to get five, ten minutes to go over there because they called me for insurance purposes. So mm -hmm. I knew you were there like that. It took you an hour to come back. So once they came back, it was like I say, like raising the enemy that's like prayer though, because they gave you the whole look. Like yeah, they Everybody, gave you like, do you want to have a seat? Uh, they, I was already sitting there, I'm looking at them like, okay, I called. They they got the new thing where the nurses have like a cell phone. Mm -hmm. I'm calling her. She didn't answer my phone. I called another nurse and her other nurse called her phone. When she answered, I said, oh, it, it, it's a problem. So when she came in, she tried to make a joke. Oh, you know, she was, she was so good. What, what do you get to the about? point, right? Like, wrap it up. So, um, yeah, she sat on the end of the bed, and I said, uh-uh. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I said, mm -hmm. so I from there. Okay. So, yeah. so at that point, they told you that she had a, a, an octal. Yeah, she, didn't, she didn't, they didn't find anything. That's how okay. she said, I'm so sorry we didn't find any eyes. Any eyes. Right. Because I know the research that I did, it was like sometimes either there's no eye or like a shorter eyelid. Um, it's, it's so, it ranged from, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's, it's but she right. did basically, from what you're saying, like you had that uneasy feeling, but she did have an eyelid that was closed. Right. That you, you know, at that time didn't know one yeah. way or another. So was she, were, at that time, on that second day, were they able to actually diagnose her? Or then it well, was, yeah, at that moment, the it was, you know, anthomia, um, born without eyes, and then the whole process, the specialist, everybody came over, it was a whole big, you know, thing. So as a, as a parent, was, is she your own child? Mm -hmm. how, how, how was, tell me, take me back to your very first reaction. I don't want to put you in that place, uh, but just because, you know, you never know that they're, we, especially first time moms, we just don't know. You know, we think we know everything, and it's just like, I don't know what what I would feel, what I'm supposed to feel, what I'm supposed to think. You feel everything. You feel every emotion you have in you comes in that moment. If it's anger, sadness, pain, confusion, you you. You blaming people, you mm -hmm. asking why, you, you don't, hey, it's not a God, it's not a, right. why. That, that's all, that's the main thing for anything. Right. Just why, 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 this, why, that. Why is this don't give me an answer. <laughs> it's fine. It, I mean, but, because cause that's raw, you know, that I, I could imagine, and, and I say that, I asked you to, to go back to that place because, you know, that's that's real cliche, and of course I'm not making any type of, you know, ridicule or joke about it, but that's, you know, that's the parent's, we just want to be blessed. Like, one of my baby got ten toes, ten fingers. And, and that's the first thing you look at. Oh, she come out. She got ten toes. Ten. She look perfectly fine. So right. You, you, you think that. It, like, you don't think about the eyes. You don't think about the eyes. You just think 
make sure she got the toes and the fingertips. And that's what you just said. Like, as long as you came out with 10 toes and fingers, then that's all you looked at. That's all we both looked at. Mm-hmm. But I just knew as a mother, I'm like, no. I'm, I'm like, well, I ain't look sweet. I mean, mm, that first guy, I knew something wasn't right. I how was how right. that? Because I know your reference, you can't reference. Is that the sound cat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know I do reference because it's I always bring it. But um, he's, he's fine. He, if it was not for him, honestly, mm-hmm. I don't know what I would have done. Mm-hmm. Because the first night, I'm like, I can't do this. I don't know what, like, yeah. you know, like, I'm just thinking, like, I'm not no, here I, for I, it. I, yeah, I, I can't do it. And the next day, he took me all the way and was like, look. This is our daughter. We're gonna love her. We're gonna take her home, and this is it. And I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, okay. See, it helps to have a strong man behind you because shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'm just so saying. I'm not even in that mind frame anymore. And I'm more like, right. yeah, this is my baby, and this is what it is. And, and she's like, so decent. <laughs> she's so decent. So Kenley is so decent. Tell us about Kenley. Tell us about her personality. She is crazy. Because 11 months, honey. I know she's she all, all in the mix. Repeats everything. She don't say words like can, yes, no. She trying to say flower, remember, whatever. I'm like, what? <laughs> like these dictionary words. But like, I guess it's the hearing the poems mm-hmm. to the scene. She just like soaking and everything. But, okay. Like, like yeah, she's doing really, really good. She likes to everybody that works with her. Like, and I know that you um you were just saying that because I know at some point you guys were you know some reason for her to get um, insight. Yeah. Okay, so how how was how was that whole thing like? How did you go about the fundraising? Actually, it was Calvin. It was one of his best friends. He does tattoos, and he okay. just said something to somebody, and they was like, "Sure, we'll do it." And I didn't expect. I didn't even go into it expecting it to be what it was at all. Like, so it you, y'all had like a tattoo party. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, t- listen, I'm just trying to- yeah, it was a tattoo shop. Um, Money and Ink. They put it together. It was like the donation of twenty dollars. More and you'll get a um, free tech to a free tech to a donation. Mm-hmm. And um, we had so many people came out. People just came in and just dropped money, and it, it just it mm-hmm. became way bigger. Than so your support system crazy. Yeah, it, it makes a difference, <laughs> and, and a lot of a lot of you guys don't realize that as parents, especially as mothers, and whether you're in a relationship or you know the father's around or whatever, just like as a mother, as a woman, you need that support and to going through something like that and they had it so it was like a lot of people from the neighborhood and just friends and family yeah. like it's it was it, it put me really at ease like mm-hmm. sitting at home that first month I didn't pull po- I post her okay but at the first month you get away with her mm-hmm. IG coach yeah school. so um once I decided to it was Mother's Day so I guess the two months where I had March um 15 so okay. Mother's Day I decided to put my story out once I put my story out and it just went viral Mm. So it was like all the support of everybody sharing their like experiences or even just disorders with their kids or just or I didn't I didn't expect it. That's right. that's the my main fear was the world. When you when mm-hmm. you come out of that high school, stepping into I don't live in the best place. Right. So stepping into all these people I know that go out to the clubs and everybody I know how's your baby wish it. I don't wanna tell you nothing. Right. Because I don't want you saying anything. Because mm-hmm. like, oh, we got to protect our babies. So, <laughs> so it's like, how am I going to face the world? That's all I thought in that hospital. How am I going to face the world? And, and how old are you? Or how old were you, if you don't mind? I'm 26. Well, I'm 27. I'm 27. Okay. So, yeah. 26. That, that That's real. That's honest. It's just like, because everybody wants to say, well, don't worry about what people want to think. And it's just like, that's bullshit. Right. Yeah. And, you, and, that, and they used to do it. Oh, it's going to be okay. You did mm-hmm. not. You did not. It's easier said than done. It's right, easier right. for you to say. <laughs> Every day is going to be okay. Yeah, it, it will be. Right. But sometimes it's just better. That I just feel like just say I'm here for you. That's yeah. it. Don't, don't try to dictate how things are going to be for me because you don't know what I'm going to go through. You don't. Yeah. have no idea. So with, so with you having that fear and then for everybody to turn out the way they did when you posted your story or, you know, when you guys had the fundraiser, I know you was mentioning that that put you at ease. That kind of gave you that. Yeah. You Of course, once you go viral, you get your trolls. So yeah. <laughs> they come and see in the box and say all types of things, but I, I promise you that was like five to ten percent of ninety mm. percent of people from everywhere, celebrities, everybody would like wow. comment. So that was like, I it that if it wasn't for that, I don't think my skin would be where that means. Like okay. I would not have the tough skin I had if I didn't encounter it like all at once. 
so you know those okay. couple of months. If I would have to, if I didn't post her and I'm just in here with, you know, trying to keep secret, and keep trying to get, it, it would not come to see. So now it was like everybody know, like however many thousands of people know about her, you know, I don't have to like, um, I'll be, I'm not getting down. So I'm like, oh, I'm the baby. Oh, pretty good. Right. You gotta give the brief disclaimer, like, okay, so here we go. <laughs> Yeah. So how so how old was she like with all the fundraising and everything? How old was she when she finally got the prosthetics? Just she was nine months. Okay. Was okay. So so you guys went through all that. So how how did you have to? Cause she is a baby, so it was it's so many developmental things that she's not really happening to come in contact with just yet anyway. So um, what was the hardship, if any, during that time? It really okay. Had to get, it was more hard on me than with her. Okay. <laughs> It was, she had to get surgery, she got her surgery, and um, the hell is, I don't know if she got a top thing or what. So with her being more to see her so swollen in her face, yeah. and she was just still like, how are you doing? Like, you know, so it was fine, and then that was reassuring that she was okay, and then once she did with that, they just got the prosthetics, which does not bother her. Anymore. So what is, what would the surgery have been? Like, so what? the surgery is, to take fat out of her butt. <laughs> To put into her eyes, to so they'll grow with her. So like, oh, okay. if I don't, you know, you saw before, like it was like these bluish, grayish kind of mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. things are in her eyes. They changed those monthly, so they were smaller. Kind of like how your eyes were grow, she really had okay. to grow her, so she'll look normal. And then once they did that, bring that room, you put the fat in there, the fat connects with your body, grows. There. So she more so as like a cushion for the prosthetics, kind right? Of. But it will grow as she grows, so she doesn't need to get uh, these things enlarged or larger. It'll okay. Keep growing as she grows, so. Yeah, and then you just put the price tag on the top. Um, so, I mean, clearly that's a lot of money. Like, I know that, because um, I actually, like, just looking over your story, I saw, like, the do- who the doctor was that, you know, that you reached out to or a doctor had reached out to you. Did you uh, uh, use the same stuff? No, no, the same person. No. Okay. She's not, she's no longer in Philadelphia, but. Okay. Yeah, that's Ocularis. Her ophthalmologist is, like, the top person that ever dealt with anatomy. So, he's seen the most cases of anatomy. So it was like, she said, listen, I do have the top quality yeah, people working on my baby. She got cheeks. <laughs> I do. And they're all like surprised with her too, though. So it's like, it's, it's really a good feeling. I don't know. You know, like people say she's a blessing. I'm like believing it now. Because yeah. like every, when I see everybody that comes in contact with her that dealt with blind kids or kids with anatomia is just as surprised at her progress as we are. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, like we got a good one. <laughs> right. So she so, is. So she would still be considered blind, though. That's what I was. I was. She, she had. Which I said to people, she had no eyes. So she still can't see. Okay. No. I mean, it, it, and I get that question all the time. She can. She had no eyes. Because you do have the kind of false idea. It's like, it's okay, like, when I she's like right. Right. She still just fake eyes. So that there is an eye there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People think of. I can explain which happened probably once or twice ever in history. It's not like a liver or a heart yeah. Yeah. So people think that can happen, but it goes into so much more than you just pop an eye in. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I will say is just, just like you said, you mentioned your tough skin. Like, as a parent, like, you, you handle this so well. Like, I mean, of course, we have our emotional moments, but... You know, you're proud, she's here, and, you know, so moving forward, she, I see that she has the Braille, so show us your shirt again. Um, yeah, she got a little glamorous braids in the way. <laughs> so, yeah, it's her name, because it's her name, the Braille, Rock and Dots, which is, of course, the Braille, which is the Dots. Um, I'm just, we started with that, that was more so just for the tattoo thing, and it mm-hmm. took off, and people all over the line, Africa, people got tattoos, up in the, it, it, wow. it, yeah. <laughs> That's it, it went there, but um, but it's a so support. It, it is support, it is support. And it's, it's really like inspiring because it's just like you just never know. That that just takes you back to all that fear that you had of the world, mm-hmm. and the world really got you back. Right. So so what? Is, so the rock and dots. Now that it's something like with with the rock, well, I went from rock and dots to um, rock and dots more. So I guess the kids is angels. This is the foundation. Okay, Kinsley's Angels. So, um, Rock and Dots were funded or whatever the case is, but Kinsley Angels is more so what I'm pushing now. Okay. Um, blind kids. They are like, yeah, if you want to talk about with the, the states or. Oh, I guess there's funding and funding programs. And, you know, a lot of states don't have anything for them. I'm lucky enough to have something, 
but a lot, I, I, of course, they don't have moms because of this, but uh, in Vegas, I have a mom, they don't have any school for her, daughter goes to a regular old school, they don't even care to really work with her, it's like a, a burden on them, like, can you bring her some stuff, because I don't, you know, I don't want yeah. to try to figure it out, so it's like, she's pushing to get stuff out there, um, it's one million, one point something million black people in the world, but you would think it was like, you know, right. that's like, the, like that's not but a they don't get popular it. thing. Mm-hmm. So what are, what are, what will Kensley's angels like? What are, what are you looking to do um, with that? To help bring get every state, every city. Some like I have a school twenty minutes away. Some people have a school an hour, two hours away. Some people, like I said, don't have schools at all. Right. They don't have braille books. They're not. A lot of areas don't have braille and a lot of us are They don't. Have, like how can they? Like how can I go? How can I live a normal life where it's nothing wrong with me other than the fact I can't sit? Right. I can eat. I can talk. I can walk. I can think. I can. I can learn just like you. Other than the fact I can see, but I can still so, educate myself. Can I get some help? No. So, like another mom said to me, is a disability is one thing, but a disadvantage is another. Mm-hmm. So you're taking anything. She can't. They can't learn. A lot of them are not educated. Ten percent of my people are educated. It's, 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 wow. it's not a big thing because they don't have the tools. They don't have anything for them to learn. So it's it's, it's, it's kind of messed up. <laughs> so as of right now, like how how can people donate? How can people be a part of Kenton's Angels? Like how can we get involved? Um, I'm working on a website okay. now, so I do try to keep because a lot of people do want stuff from me, and I was selling the shirts just through my page. It becomes mm-hmm. a big, yeah, it's you know, and I um, but once I do get the website, I'm like, I'm, I'm in the works of doing like events. I'm doing something for Easter. Like I'm trying to you know raise more awareness. I'm talking to people. I'm you know. Someone you know might have said something to somebody. That everybody, knows. you know, like I'm giving mm-hmm. to the the people that can help me. Right. Okay. More so you're at the stage. You're at the building stage. So if there is anybody that is interested in you know helping out, being a part of, you still have the shirts for sale. You still. Yeah. So they can contact me. I can do local things right now, <laughs> but um, a lot of the shipping I just cut off. Okay. It's becoming yeah, a little bit too much, but. Um, yeah, but once I get everything in the works, I'm trying to get the funding for just to bring awareness and bring us up here, you know. Like a lot of people know about, you know, autism, they know about dancing. Like, there's mm-hmm. a lot of programs out for a lot of these kids. So it's like, why can't, like, a girl look like small things, like, yeah. they're not, they're not being part of So anything. simple. And, and I like what you said, disability versus disadvantage. That that really puts it into that puts it into the light because it's just like, you know, the fact of the matter is these kids are just being disadvantaged to not have access to to these same things. Well, I'm so glad you came. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Make sure that you keep me posted when you you know when you get the website up and running. If you guys are local here in Philly or in the tri-state area, she does have the t-shirt. Show us the t-shirts once again. <laughs> rocking dots. I'm gonna get my shirt and then you guys can follow her with shirt. You wanna give it to Rocking with Ken. Rockin' with underscore Kins. So hit that rockin' underscore, rockin' with underscore Kins to get your t-shirts to support. Um, do you have a little company or anything, or did you kind of cut off that stuff? Okay. But once I get the, the events rolled and everything, just kind of support. I mean, like, any, like I'm, it's for the blind kids, but I, I'm, I, I've met a lot of moms. So autistic, Down syndrome, I call them my special mamas. Everybody just come out and we all have fun and support each other. So. Thanks for coming out and sharing your story. Thanks for having me. All right, so we have our next Melon and Mom coming up. We have Miss Wanda Turner coming through. Hey, girl, hey. What's up? Hey, baby Kate. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Well, Miss Wanda, so I actually met with Miss Wanda about a year and a half ago. Come and find out she knew me since I was a kiddo, but I didn't know her. And um, we actually had an interview. So I interviewed her and I an interview that we did at her home um last year, almost to date, like about like last January. And um, you know, and I just didn't get a chance to air it just based on not really knowing how to put the information out. But your story was you know really really touching to me um and i i appreciate you coming today to share your story um with the people so miss wanda is a mother of two tell us about your kids i have a son named maurice who lives in new york, new york at the present time he's 31. my daughter fortress they were 11 years apart the fortress was still alive she'd be 21 november 2nd of this year fortress passed away 
June 24, 2015, from cardiomyopathy and hypertension, which is the enlargement of the heart on the left side. It could be on either side, she had to remember. On the left side. Um, she was born normal and healthy. Through our journey, she was seven months old. I went through domestic violence. In the process of me trying to leave her father, he tried to kill both of us. She had head trauma, fracture school, bruised brain, bleeding internally, um, on phenobarbital, 7.5 milliliters, five times a day. On what? What is that? Phenobarbital. It's a seizure medicine. She started to have seizures. And and how old was she when she was seven months old? Okay. Um, she was on that for about two years. In the process of everything, one of her father went on the run. So I wound up learning about DHS. So you ain't know about DHS back then? I knew, but I had never experienced them. Right. Because I didn't hurt my child. But because they felt as though I could protect her, they took her for month of five days. Mm. And this was, how old? She was seven months seven then months. too? Yes. Um, she had been on June 23rd, 1998. We went to Einstein, a health court here was shot. Mm -hmm. They tried to keep me, but of course I wasn't staying. <laughs> I was born a shot. Got their excellent service. Um, they tried various medicines, and the only thing that worked was phenobarbital. You and I take it, and we're done. So you can imagine what it would do to a child. Right. But her tolerance was so high. Once she finally got a school age, she wouldn't, she only ever slept. Um, she was kindergarten. Mm -hmm. She got to school, she was hyperactive. They thought she was very hyperactive. She would do her work, but then she would disrupt the class. Okay. She was bored. And she was like, I'm bored, can I write on the board? So we're talking kindergarten. So at this point, she still had no, what was her diagnosis at that point? She didn't have She didn't have anything. She didn't have none. She was actually back to normal. Okay. You know, she, she started walking at seven months. She was potty trained and off the bottle before she was a year. Oh, she was a little advanced. So was my son. <laughs> but see, and I'm older, so mm. I believe in just doing it the way my mom Get to it. Come on, gotta do it. Gotta and, do this. You know, usually, like a lot of women, they have multiple children back mm -hmm. in the back. My kids was 11 years apart. So you were the I was like, hey, you know, <laughs> it's time to get busy. My son, we potty trained him, and he kept on, he wanted to go to the bathroom with every night in the household. So finally I said, okay, it's time to take, take these pampers yeah. and put drawers on. And he slept for one night and then he on himself. But my mom forgot to take him to the kitchen. I mean, forgot to take him to the bathroom. Took him to the kitchen for some bone sticks. <laughs> and he peed in here. <laughs> so she was like, I forgot he had to go to the bathroom. I said, what you think? You know, but he never, I never went through the bed with face with either one of them. Okay. Um, so when Fortress turned 11, mind you, she's not sleeping. They thought she had ADHD, but she did. Okay. So did they misdiagnose her or they misdiagnosed her mm -hmm. with the ADHD? Initially, she was on the medication. Okay. She wasn't even taking the pill. And that happens a lot, guys. A lot of, of these kids are getting misdiagnosed. They're disrupting class or they're talking too much. And then, they, especially now, and they just want to be like, oh, maybe they got a little ADHD. They got some ADD. They got this, this, and that. Just to kind of give them some pills and, you know. And I was trying to figure mom. out what it was because she was passing the classwork, you know. Then she got to the point where so. So that. And I was going to speak up. Um, she went to that story in elementary school. Okay. And everybody just loved her. You know, she would get in trouble. They give her in house suspension. I'm not like, like, no, she needs to be held accountable. <laughs> suspend that. So I want her home with me. Right. Like, suspend her. She needs to get a disciplinary action. Yeah. And um, basically, when she was 11, she passed out of school. Oh, wow. By this time, she's at Roosevelt Middle School. No, okay. Grandma Street. And my so dad, 11, she like 6th grade. Yeah, 7th yeah. grade. So, my dad came out and went to Einstein. Usually, they send kids straight to St. Chris or Chuck. Mm -hmm. They did her, she was born there, number one. So, they did the whole workup on her. And they told me what was wrong with cardiomyopathy and hypertension. Now, what, what exactly is that? Cardio, cardiomyopathy is the enlargement of the heart. It okay. could be your whole heart or half or a portion. Um, took her back to her primary. Now, mind you, primary doctor dealt with my son previously. He was given the practice by my son's pediatric doctor, so he was a good doctor, mm -hmm. I thought. 
But ultimately, mm-hmm. ultimately, you're seeing my daughter because she's on max. You're seeing her every three months because we need to have liver functions, check kidney, the whole nine. How is it that I'm there and you're seeing her? She had type of symptoms, you're not saying nothing. Mm. So she wound up being referred to St. Chris. So at that point, were they, did they not know or they were like hiding when we went, it from When you? we went to St. Chris, okay, they let me know if she developed it. But by her doctor not saying that she had hypertension, he wasn't checking for anything else. Because you know when you got hypertension, it can affect your heart. So immediately he should have been like, okay, but she has hypertension. So therefore, yeah. yeah. So I revamped everything. I don't even deal with can't go to a I don't fry food. Mm-hmm. It's not healthy. Everything is baked. Only time I eat fried food is when I go out. Because everything is fried. Okay. Um, fresh fruits and vegetables. Revamp everything. I've been to so many hospitals in Philadelphia trying to get my baby cardiomyopathy um, therapy. Okay. Which is like basically, a, you know, working on your upper body. You know, um, it's a cardio. Okay. Cardiotherapy. Nobody would touch her because she wasn't 18. Oh, wow. I've been to DuPont and Morris Hospital, mm-hmm. various hospitals in other parts of town. Nobody wanted to touch her. And I'm a mother, but yet it still is a matter. Because, you know, at that time, from the age of 11 to 15, you know, now, example, you have a team, a team. Mm-hmm. they get pregnant. You say you can't have this baby, they tell the doctor. They'll take them out of your home mm-hmm. and place them with someone so they get that baby and then send them back to your Because they have like different they rights. Have the like rights. Once they, once right. They have but yet it's still, she couldn't, you couldn't say, she can have a baby, give birth, give her life, but you can't save her life. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. The system is fucked up. Guys. Been fucked up for years. So, we went through the process. June 1st, 2013, she went to the hospital. For just did get pregnant. She oh. lost the baby. First breaker, only breaker. Mm. When she was how old? She was still mm-hmm. Which he's still around to the death. Mm. He has a son now. He calls me Wawa. Because <laughs> he can't say Wanda. Mm-hmm. But we were at the hospital. She lost the baby. But her heart had got worse. She was on, mind you, she was on Car- Carvedanol, like Matopolo, Aspirin. Just because by this time her heart is, you know. So we were going back, instead of having to go to the cardiologist, we was going every two months, every three months. We go back, June 1st, her heart had gotten worse. So they admitted her. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, I'm asking, does she need a heart transplant? What's the next step? They're mm-hmm. like, no, we're going to do an infusion. You know how people get chemo cancer, chemo, chemotherapy, mm-hmm. all that, it's, it's not that, it's just like blood pressure medicine, heart medicine, but it's just intravenous, they call it an infusion. Okay. She did an infusion from June 1st to June 11th. Things looked a little bit better. But on her left side of her heart, instead of going like this, it was going. So it wasn't like was pumping fast enough? No, not pumping properly at okay. all. So opposed, she got out to the level. That was a Friday. He's the doctor said to me, you have her back here every Monday. Okay. Came back on the 14th, was what that Monday. He did the echocardiogram, lab work, everything was still the same. Fine. Come back the following Monday, which was until June 25th, <coughs> early morning appointment. Um, the doctor was going home to Israel to see his mother, so every patient that he had, he didn't complete their visit. Mm. He did her blood work, but he didn't do her echo. We left the hospital at 1 o'clock, got home, I say about 3.30, quarter to 4, my daughter crashed in my apartment, and my brother, I, could, I was stuck, I couldn't, literally, I couldn't move. My brother was such a chair, right, to so rescue squad, I got there, we got to the hospital, I say about 4 o'clock, they worked on her so from 4 o'clock to 6 to be on, and they called it. I'm in a trauma room with them, my daughter's, it's a warm person. Mm-hmm. She go out to, outside in the snow and come back in. And she's just as warm as you and I like we mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there in the doctor's talking to everybody working on her. Her heart kept fluctuating up, down, up, down, up, down. But when I touched her feet, they were ice cold. Mm-hmm. I didn't say anything. I believe in God. And 
I believe he works miracles. So I say that. So when 659, they called it. I was numb for like, honestly, two years. You know how people come to the house, bring the bottle, come check on you, you know? Mm -hmm. I took a shot, but I wasn't drinking. My mom was like, well, won't you have a drink? I said, that's how addiction starts. Yeah. Think about it, everybody that's getting high and are addicted, they're trying to escape something. I'd rather feel the world. I wasn't feeling no pain, I was numb. I, I, my mind was like, you're in pain, I'm crying. But I literally, you didn't I, just, I didn't feel it. So let me ask you, because I know that you mentioned earlier that how did you determine, or how was it determined that her heart condition was the result of the abuse? Initially, heart disease doesn't run in my family. Okay. Um, diabetes doesn't. Okay. On her father's side as well. Um, the medication, you know, the, the domestic violence caused her to have to take medication. Okay. Number one, she was seasoned from her before she had to feed her water From being on feed her water for two years, she was fine with that. But she never slept. I mean, I had so many un nights without sleep mm -hmm. because she didn't sleep and would get up and be fine and go to school but it's been numerous times me and my dad had to go pick her up from school she said crash in school so she was so she basically lived her whole childhood having like that like seizures right no she stopped having seizures so when you say so crash what, what was she like, she would crash as far as go to sleep in school uh, like college you know how college students students bitch she wasn't on the meds, so though. Think about it. Mm -hmm. And finally, I said, okay, we need a sleep aid. We tried everything over the counter, but the drill, whatever. None of that was working. So they gave her Seraphil initially. Oh, okay. Now, mind you, I did start taking it after the trauma and all that. She was fine and normal, good. She got on the Seraphil. It worked initially. But with these, psych it's a psychiatric med, mm -hmm. but it's not every medication that anybody ingests in your body is used for multiple things. Mm -hmm. So therefore, while you're helping me, you're helping me to, to demise because it's eventually, it's chemical. Right. It's gonna kill you. Or it's gonna kill your liver. It's gonna kill something. It's like helping one thing. And that's what I wanted, why, why I wanted to have you on because like listening to your story, like I, I wanted to bring you on for multiple reasons. Number one, there's a lot of women, there's a lot of people out here experiencing domestic abuse in their relationships and they're not understanding the impact that it has on the children in the situation yes your situation was really extreme i know you said that you know her, her father tried to kill the both of you like right. that's intense and it doesn't always necessarily yeah that's like that's movie shit exactly you know, and for you to go through it it's, it's wrong that's it's real. real that's like shit. and i you know prior to that I was a certified gemologist. I worked at K Jewels for five years. Mm. Um, worked for an accountant. I had a career, but I couldn't go back to work after that because I don't trust people. I'm a, mm -hmm. And as you know, I'm a people person. Right. I love people. But if you experience but, something like that and somebody try to kill me and my baby, she can't yeah, go nowhere yeah, without me. Yeah, it took a long time for my mother, for me to let, you know, let my mother and father keep her overnight. I swear to God, it was about, she had to be about five before I let her go out of my sight. And that's only because she could talk. Right. And she could tell you what somebody did to her. And so, she could call me. So I, I did want to ask you, and I don't remember if I asked you during the interview, but I wanted to ask you. So I know that you and Fortress, you know, you guys endured the domestic abuse from your, from, you know, from, father. from her father. Did your son ever have any, like, experiences? No, what basically what happened. My son's father's out of the family, they're bipolar. Okay, so they have two different fathers yes. that he didn't really have I to have interact. My son's father, my husband, then my daughter's father. Okay. My husband, we never had any children. I called okay. such Um He had issues, but he wouldn't take the psych meds. He would take them here and there, but my son is very holy. Okay. So he's like, God, take care of me. I, I'm not doing mm -hmm. this shit. You know, he's <laughs> weed. So at the end of the day, we're like, but. The, the earth will take care of me. It sure okay? will. And get me together. <laughs> so basically, he was going through his own issues because when it happened, he wasn't there. He felt as I should have been there to protect my mom and my sister. Mm. And I had to explain to him. Because they have a large gap. So he was yeah. off living his life by the time Fergie was 15. Yeah. They were 11 years apart. 
yeah. but you would have never knew that they were there. So it's such a big gap because they, they were like old. this. That's how they were brother and sister. Even if they older or whatever, mm-hmm. and then, you know. She used to tell him what to do when he had his little episode and he ran. She was like, Marcy, if you don't go just get your ass down, I'm going to break you from the go about the business. Literally. So, um, and I know that you you shared your story about Fortress, like you're ver- you're very open and vocal, you know. And I know that you were looking to also. Did you already start a foundation? I initially, my mother and my dad were both sick. My mother, my, my dad passed away March fifth, two thousand sixteen. Mm-hmm. Eight months later, my mother passed away. Mm-hmm. But prior to her passing, I did an event at the TLO Fortress Heart Foundation. Okay. I haven't gotten it off the ground because. I'm dealing with my mom's estate, mm-hmm. trying to handle everything, and hopefully by June, I'll have the EIN number and okay. go through the process. So what will Fortress is, Fortress is hard? Fortress is hard. Fashion. I'm trying to figure out whether it's just going to just be a hard foundation to educate parents on what we are ingesting, how it kills our children. Okay. Or, but then like you said, I've known men that go through the best domestic violence as mm-hmm. far as women. It's only three, I'd say about four, Shelters in Philadelphia for men. Mm-hmm. But see, the difference between men and women, women tell, men don't tell, because it's mm-hmm. demasculates them. But if you're already demasculated because this woman is beating on you, you might as well tell the whole, tell the whole right. story. But my thing is, I don't want it to just be about women and men. It's how it affects your children. Because, mm-hmm. and you know, children are sponges. Not old, when they get older, most you know, but they're they soak in everything. Yes. And my daughter doesn't remember this stuff. I had, and I, if, when our dad went to jail, and when she got old enough to understand, I would tell her the positive things about her father. Mm-hmm. I never assassinated his character. His mother actually did it. Um, My daughter was down here one day, and she was upstairs, and they were talking about me. Okay. And she overheard. So my daughter, she's quite articulate and very smart. She went to the library, because it was in the paper. She got every newspaper article that was in Philadelphia that was in, it was in. And she came home to me, and so what happens? He was getting out of jail. He was already out of jail. And she wanted to see him. And everybody from the DHS worker that took the case are still in my life to this day. And I couldn't talk to nobody because I was like, what up? I, me personally, I was like, to myself, fuck you. <laughs> so do you have that? So as of now, I know you said you're looking to get the foundation up and running, but you're just trying to get some other things. So that is still to come. Yes. So, but you haven't, like, so you you need to keep me posting. You need to let me oh, know definitely. when you have, like, your next events and things. Sounds like you guys are both, like, creating foundations. Yeah. And, you know, because you just want to build that awareness. Yeah, you have to. Because, you know, you, you, would, you would never know. A lot of people don't know that the medicine eventually kills you. Mm-hmm. Like, they're going to do we have a lot of heroin addicts dying right now. Yeah, I can't even get into that. Girl. But that's a whole other thing. Well, yes. I, I want to thank you for coming through to sharing your story. One day I will get her full interview posted. We have a really long interview. It's like an hour and a half. So I'll definitely, you know, try to get that together. But I, I appreciate you sharing your story about Fortress and, you know, and just bringing that awareness and just being a able to still be here and be a pop mom like that's God. You, so. you're doing what you do so that's can't be no other life. right of course not um we have our next mom and mom coming up we have miss shine Faye coming through no you don't have to get up and i'm um, just gonna say yep and levi is coming out with his mommy hey you guys hi hi What's up? Y'all got your little superhero outfits on. I know, I know. Wonder Woman, he's getting me. Y'all cute. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. Thank you. So, thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so Miss Shante, I actually have. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna feel like a lifetime. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've known each other for quite some time, and I wanted to invite her um, on the show today because she is an awesome autism mom. She's a very, very um, outspoken and active in the autism community, and I wanted you and Levi to come through, share your story. She just recently wrote a book that she's going to yes, tell us is. about. Mm-hmm. So welcome, welcome, and let us know. Yeah. What's up, Levi? Can I get a hand? High five or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's you got all the toys. <laughs> yeah. He it's got all the toys. Okay. <laughs> it's the norm for us. If we don't leave the house with at least three toys, then you know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, did you want to talk about the book? Yeah, you can talk about the book. Um, I I've been writing 
poetry since I was like 16. So, okay. like over the years, I'm like, I gotta publish something, I gotta publish something. But um, actually, a friend of mine who's watching, I see Lee, um, she told me that on Amazon you can do self publishing. So mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, what? Because I thought you had to put up all this money yeah. and it costs all this stuff to publish. But if you go on Amazon, and all you gotta do is just upload a manuscript. Mm-hmm. They'll format everything for you. You can create the cover. Oh wow! You can set the price. Know. All this. So basically, it's just um, just a little book of poetry that is um, just talks about the journey uh, with me and my son so far. So like the very first poem, which is probably the most emotional, is when I found out that he was diagnosed with autism and what I was feeling in that moment. And that was probably the hardest one to write. <laughs> I think in the middle of writing it, I was crying the whole time. Well, that happens. The rest of the book, believe it or not, I wrote it through all of his meltdowns. Because when okay. he has a meltdown, that kind of affects me emotionally. Mm-hmm. So what I was doing was when he was in the moment, I'm like, I put my headphones on. I'm listening to something to calm me down because he's. it'll take a while for him to calm down. And I was just writing. And then before I knew it, I just had like a whole collection of things that I was feeling at the moment. So these are all emotions. Yeah. So just warning you, if you do read it, you might cry. I don't do that on purpose. I don't just cry. I don't cry. I don't care. <laughs> well, so the book is called My Life and Puzzle Pieces. So that kind of is real self-explanatory now that yeah. you're explaining like what what that's all about. Yeah. So how, how can people get this book? Because you're, you just kind of told us that it's, it's pretty raw with your experience. You... Because when was Levi diagnosed? So you could give us a little background. Um, well, my mom's watching. Hi, mom. Hey, mom. Um, <laughs> actually, my mom was the one who kind of saw things that he was doing that made her start Googling autism. Okay. And at the time, I was working 12-hour shifts at a hospital. So the time invested to see what was really going on, mm-hmm. I wasn't really there because I was working. So she was like, he's doing X, Y, and Z. And at first I'm like, all right, whatever. But right. then I started paying attention to certain things he was doing. And then I noticed he was on point developmentally. Okay. And then he stopped talking. Oh, okay. So then at that point, to be almost two years old and only speak barely five words is a red flag. Okay. So I made a decision to go to his pediatrician. And I said, well, I don't... Because it's kind of like you get thrown to the wolves. And that's like the main thing in Philly is trying to navigate who to talk to. It's not like Philly got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, all these levels, Philly got a lot of work to do. But on the flip side, I don't want to, I don't want to no, go bash there. Yeah, I'm not going to bash Philly because once you get into the community, it's mm-hmm. so many resources. It's just, who do I need to talk to yeah. to get to that point? So thank goodness this pediatrician gave us the right tools to kind of navigate because once she was like, I really think like based on the MCAT test or whatever, you know, when you go mm-hmm. for like an 18 month, two year checkup at the doctors or whatever, um, she was like, I think he has some type of delay, but I can't diagnose officially him. diagnose. Right. right. So um, she referred us to Childlink. Childlink is an early intervention service that service um, children from babies all the way up to age two. Okay. And then they transition from Childlink to Ellen. So once he once they turn three, and he'll be transitioning out, and he's going to kindergarten, my baby. Ooh. But um, <laughs> you ready to go to school? Are you ready? <laughs> so um, once we started getting like ABA therapy and occupational therapy, I just started talking to them, and, mm-hmm. and and the people that were coming out to the house were just a wealth of knowledge too, like. Oh, you can do this. Go here. But I'm like, okay. And then I just started looking up stuff, and then just started kind of networking from there. And yeah. then social media, even though it's the root of all evil, it's, sometimes it's like, not. It's it the really like, sweet. Yeah, I feel like social yeah. media is it, it's what you make it. Right. If you right. want there to look for the trash, then you're gonna find trash right. because right. I'm here on social media. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I started finding some really amazing people on social media that they do this, they do that, mm-hmm. you know, within the autism community. And that's how it kind of trickled down. So I started doing the autism walks. Um, I'm doing the Eagles Autism Challenge in May. Oh. So I'm raising money if anyone wants to donate. <laughs> yeah, like that's what um, I was going to say. Like, tell us about your, because you, you do a lot of fundraising and a lot of, like, you are so active in the community. And like, I want to shout out my team, Team Super Mom. So everybody that's on that team, I'm actually wearing our team shirt. And on the back it says, it's okay. Um, why fit in? Why fit in? 
when you're born to stand out. Right, and that's, okay. that's our team motto that's been for like the last three years we've been walking because we walk for three amazing kids, my son, my friend Dorika's daughter, okay. uh, TT, and my best friend Gabby, her older son who has Asperger's. So every year we walk for them. Last year, we actually raised over $1,000 that goes to Autism Speaks. So, mm -hmm. um, and then I did another walk for actually for his school and they mm -hmm. actually raised $32,000. Which and that's I'm really thankful with his somewhere. school because it's um, state funded. So mm -hmm. if funding gets cut, which right. it happens, not get right it. but if funding gets cut, his programs get affected with it because they 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 basically how they thrive is basically money from from parents. So Levi's about to go to kindergarten, and that has been stressful. Very stressful, but we got him registered. But we're hitting a snag with the school district, and I'm already irritated by um, it. <laughs> Shout out, we love the school district. <laughs> the school out there. We love them. Well, it's just some. It's just you know, I gotta wait for them to reevaluate him mm -hmm. so that there's no um, breaks in his services. Because right now he's getting speech, physical, occupational behavior support and they're going to add back in ABA so he'll get like a one-on-one -on -one person to be with him okay while he's in kindergarten um but right now it's just a matter of the school the this school remain that, hopeful no I, no I am I am remaining positive but I gotta be realistic too yeah <laughs> <laughs> because the school that they made me register him they have a life support okay. program but that's not for kids with autism All, kids with autism need a certain type of environment to learn Okay. So it's totally. I mean, and, and not saying that program is bad, but those mm -hmm. are for kids that have some type of physical disability. They need, you know, life skills. Mm -hmm. Kids with autism, which that's another thing that kind of irks me with people that, that don't know, is that they think it's a mental illness or a mental okay. disability. It's not. It's a totally separate thing because when he went for his diagnosis, even the psychologist was like, um, "What we do is we." first um, evaluate if there's any type of level of delay, mm -hmm. which is in the category of an intellectual disability. And then they measure the level of autism. Well, tell us about the book. Tell us where we can find the book, how we can find the book, what you got coming up. Yes, so the book was A Labor of Love. Um, there's about eight or nine poems in here. But um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, it's $10. <laughs> um, yeah, and my son's pictures on the back. Yeah. So, and what also, that? The back? oh, on the back it says, My journey with my son Levi through the language of poetry, single mom of an amazing little boy who just happens to have autism. Because what I, I want people to know is that my son is amazing, he just so happens to have autism. Right. Not the so, other way around. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. right. Because. So, Where's, what's your um, social media? Like, is it available on your Amazon? Like, we just search it. Can we find it through your link? Like, do you have a link in your yeah, bio? Yeah, there's a link in my bio. Um, I'm drawing a blank on my IG name because I'm on Patreon. So, like, what's the mama something something? Yeah, it's autism underscore mama 82. If that's wrong, then just I'm a tag on Facebook because <laughs> I even get it wrong sometimes. I'm like, wait a minute, I can't bring up my own page. But um, yeah, you can find it on there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also on Facebook. Um, so um, if anyone has questions, um, advice, networking, if you need to find someone, I'm, I, I know at least the main person I can direct you to is Icy Lee Basketball. She is a godsend in the autism community. I, I definitely want to shout her out because she doesn't get enough credit. Oh, and I love you, girl. Oh, so, that's, that's what I want. That's what you. That's what we striving for. We gonna get there. You <laughs> gonna get there. Yeah. Well, we got our last melanin mom coming up. We got Miss Charlie. She didn't bring baby girl with her, but come on, come on, come on. Hey, cutie pie. What's up, girl? How are you? I'm good. How are you? You know. <laughs> so Miss Charlie, she has a beautiful daughter named Brielle. I'm not gonna tell you how long I know her since she was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted I invited you to the show. I, I, I wanted you to bring Brie, but that's okay. And um, I invited Charlize um to the show today because I feel like she's your first. She's a first time mom, and I love the way you interact with your daughter. Like I love the way you speak life into her. She speaks a lot of like 
encouragement in turn. There was something that I oversaw, like I just happened to witness, and I wanted to bring on some more so. Just speak about that to the audience because as a woman, just not even as a mother, but just as a woman, it's something that we don't get often. Women don't encourage each other a lot. And a lot of women don't encourage their children as much as they should. So I wanted you to speak on some of the, you know, the, I don't know what you would call them. Like, I have like little quotes and sayings that y'all say to each other. And I just thought it was so cute. Okay. Um, my daughter is, She's three. Her name is Brielle. And um, I I encourage her that way because when I was younger, when I was a brown girl, I struggled with low self-esteem um, and my self-worth. It just wasn't there. And growing up, I didn't really focus on it. I knew I had low self-esteem, but then when I had my daughter, um, as a woman, I had low self-esteem. Mm. So I... Um, allowed myself, I fell into a depression and the depression really affected me, which affected the way I was a mother to my daughter. Okay. And then I realized, okay, if I'm going to allow this to overtake me, then my daughter is going to have the same struggles that I had coming up. So I decided to pull myself up out of that and say, I have a daughter to raise. And um, that explains the quotes, that explains Tell uh, us the quotes. things I say to her. So, um, just, I always tell her I love her. I show her lots of affection, give her hugs and kisses all the time. Um, I tell her she's beautiful. Every time I comb her hair, every time I brush her hair, I say, you have beautiful hair. I love your hair. It's so curly mm -hmm. or it's um, so thick and nice and pretty. Um, I don't know. I just make sure I tell her every day that she's beautiful. But not only beautiful, I make sure I tell her she's brilliant. She's powerful. She can be anything she wants to be. Um, she's very strong. And I encourage her to be independent in everything that she's doing. Um, I realize that the media, a lot of the time, objectifies women. Um, so I pay attention to some of the things that she watches on TV, some of the music she listens to. I know we think sometimes it's cute for our kids, our little girls, to um, you know stick the butts out and, yeah. and do the twerking. But um, at three years old, yeah, that may be cute. But as she gets older, what if she thinks that's all I am? That's all I have to offer. Um, so I just try to encourage her the best way I can. I like that because it is like it was something that you said stuck out to me because the curly hair and you know and the brown girl thing. It is still even now, although we're all melanated and we all look different and we're all beautiful and we are working on our own self worth and self esteem. It's still a struggle out here in the media, you know, just in the world that it's still not that glamorized. You know, so it, it is important that, you know, we continue to build our kids up because, and it was really important what you said, because you have to realize when you're experiencing something. Because if you if you weren't able to bring yourself out of that, then it would, the cycle continues. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because overall, that that's how those things happen. So I encourage any of the young moms out here, especially the young moms. And I'm not saying young moms don't know anything. I was a teenage mom. So I'm not saying that, oh, if you're younger, you're older, whatever the case. But just keep in mind that everything you're experiencing, everything you're feeling, it's being filtered into, into those kids. So if you're not showing them, telling them that they're beautiful and that they're awesome and, you know, and keep her popping because kids keep popping, okay? So, you know, you just have to... Continue to encourage your kids as well as while we're trying to grow as women ourselves So I want to thank all of my melanin moms for coming out. I really appreciate all of you guys We all have totally different. I didn't bring my kids on here because y'all know they get on my nerves But <laughs> I just wanted to thank everybody, you know, thank all you guys for coming out I want to encourage my audience and all of you guys to just speak life into your children and you know just continue to encourage them and whatever the situation is whatever your parental situation is that there's support out here and i know y'all can reach out to me but we have four amazing moms that they all have totally different situations and scenarios that are here to support you and they're all looking for that support so keep that in mind also when you're raising your kids with the bullying keep in mind what you're speaking to your kids what you're allowing your kids to say to other children because there's a lot of people out here going through different things and if you don't teach your child to appreciate other people's differences then we're always going to have issues so i want to thank all my moms i want you guys to make sure y'all tune in next week we have a crazy show coming up so we have a two-part series coming up next week 
and the week after um, My Body, My Temple. This upcoming week, we will have um, four different people coming through. We have Sean, the vegan chef from Go Vegan Philly. We have April Natural coming through. She has an all-natural skincare line. We have Tracy's Takeover, and we have WC Fitness coming through.